represented here. Um, my co-host for this particular session is uh, Dr. John Graham, from the Office of University Life. I'm sure he's joined us. Uh, and we just wanted to, you know, the, the context for this webinar, we started talking about student online orientation, I think back in, you know, 2016, 2017. But our friend COVID has um, alerted us to the need to think more deliberately about uh, our pivot to remote instances of all student facing activities, right? Of course, including um, our courses and our program delivery, but also how do we really think through how we welcome our students, how we onboard our students, uh, what do they need to know, what, what do we want them to know, um, and so on and so forth. So this webinar is a result of some um, uh, revised thinking, some refreshed thinking around this topic, and the campuses here have very graciously um, uh, agreed to help us uh, think through how we might approach this topic. Um, their approaches are all slightly different, but I'm, I'm thinking we'll see some common themes and I'm thinking we'll um, have an opportunity for some questions and um, some deeper dives as we move forward. We also have um, two students joining us today. They will, I, we probably will do our campus um, uh, showcase gallery walk until about noon and then we will um, welcome our students and uh, they will help us think through all of the things that maybe we know, maybe we don't know, and maybe we need to rethink, right? So anytime we can include student voices, we are always most appreciative of that opportunity. Um, and next slide, please. Great, so this is just a very basic framework in which um, I think most of the examples today here um, will fall. So uh, when we're creating online student, new student online student orientations, um, what do they need to know about being connected? What do they need to know relative to being an online student? Um, and what does this new student need to know about the technologies necessary to be an online student, right? So it's a vexing topic to sort of think through replacing, and I'm putting that in quotes because it depends on the campus and it depends on the program, but replacing the face-to-face -face orientation. Um, but this is sort of the general framework for that online paradigm. Uh, next slide, please. Great, so we have our first campus. I'll turn it to our colleagues from Binghamton University. Hello, everybody. Um, uh, so today it's uh, myself, Betsy Staff, um, and Andrea McArgill. Um, so I will be talking first about uh, what our, um, what Binghamton University has done for our online um, virtual orientation. So taking that face-to-face -face orientation and transitioning it, transitioning it into a virtual orientation. So slide please. Thank you. A little bit about Binghamton University. Um, so we are um, made up of about six colleges or schools. Uh, we have about 130 or so undergraduate programs with 80 or so uh, graduate programs. Our overall campus population is about 18,000 uh, with that undergraduate pop population at about 14,000. Um, so when we're looking at these new students who are coming in for the summer orientation program, we're looking at, these are from the fall 2019 numbers, uh, but we have about 28, 2,900 first year students and 800 transfer students. Um, at this moment, um, zero of our uh, online undergraduate degrees are 100% online, um, and there are 21 courses that are 100% online. This is obviously all before uh, COVID-19 and what, what the fall may bring. <laughs> uh, slide, please. So, um, as I'm sure many of my colleagues across um, campuses did this summer, uh, we had a, a planned a lovely program that we were going to institute in June and July in person and then threw it out the window in one day and had just a couple weeks to come up with a new plan. Uh, so we worked with a lot of different uh, entities on our campus, a lot of different campus partners to come up with what we thought was the best program for Binghamton University. So our virtual, our new student virtual orientation has four major components. It runs from May 15th to August 15th, which is a very big change for us. It is the orientation experience this summer rather than your orientation session. Um, so this experience includes an orientation checklist on our student portal, my.binghamton.edu, 
a virtual mini orientation session with your orientation advisor via Zoom, which we had our first one today. Very exciting. Uh, virtual academic advising and course registration, which were scheduled through Starfish and then conducted via Zoom. And then a weekly email communication highlighting different campus services uh, that goes uh, through the beginning of the school year. Slide, please. So this is just a snapshot of what our um, checklist looks like. Uh, we're able to put it right on the front face of the, the portal so that as soon as a student is logged in um, with their pods username and password, they are greeted with the orientation checklist. This is a living document. It's actually able to um, be, it communicates back and forth with some of our systems. So if they've submitted their ID card photo, it checks it off for them as complete. Um, or it works with banner to be able to recognize some of the tasks that they've done. Some of our systems don't work with each other though. Um, and so we do have a self selection uh, process on there so they can mark um, if it is complete or not. Um, it, the, grow, the checklist items do grow and grow as the summer goes on um, because we release information every two weeks. Um, so on the first and the 15th of every month, we ask the students to come back to their checklist to see what new items are being rolled out. And we have been very strategic about what those items are um, and when they're being rolled out so that it, it goes in line with what they need to complete uh, for whatever part of the program that they're in. Um, slide. Thank you. Um, so our mini orientation sessions um, with the orientation advisors is a two hour Zoom session facilitated by uh, the new student program staff and the OAs. Um, they are in larger rooms of about 100 to 150 people, but then we we're able to break them down with our student staff to small groups of about 10 people so that we can really focus on um, having them meet each other, having them meet uh, new students um, and get acclimated to Binghamton. Um, so it's, as you can see there in that program details, it's a lot about working with the students one-on-one -on -one or in those small groups and um, getting them to know each other um, and that social aspect of things and getting involved with our campus. Slide. Thank you. Um, the next component is our virtual academic advising and registration. Again, utilizing our uh, MyDotBinghamton portal, uh, the academic advising offices have created a series of slides and videos and uh, PDFs and whatnot that the students need to kind of complete as their homework um, before they're able to register for a one-on-one -on -one advising appointment. Um, most of the advising appointments are happening um, uh, for about a 30-minute window um, throughout either June or July. Our first uh, sessions start on, on Friday. Um, so the after the student has been completed all of their homework, they will be contacted by the advising offices to complete the next steps. Um, so more to come on that, because right, we don't know how that one's gonna go just yet. We're hoping it's gonna go awesome. Uh, slide. Okay, so now I'm gonna actually in, uh, introduce Andrea McGargle into the conversation because she's gonna talk a little bit more about this online learning that now all of our students are kind of becoming. Hi, thanks Betsy. So um, in conjunction with a lot of different uh, divisions across campus and including faculty, we developed a, an organization in our Blackboard uh, portal. And we've actually always had this course in, in a different setting for our summer and winter students. As Betsy discussed earlier, we don't have 100% online undergraduate students. It's, we don't have any 100% online course or degree offerings. The only courses that we really have that are 100% online are usually in the summer winter terms. So we, we're just not an online school and it's not something that we've invested in yet. Um, so this course has always been for those summer and winter students and it's accessible in a, a tab in Blackboard um, called the Help and Info for Students tab. And the students can self-enroll in the organization. They won't be automatically enrolled in it. They'll have to elect to choose it because this is not a required component of their experience. It's completely optional for them. Because I work with faculty, my main job is uh, faculty development. We do encourage our faculty to make this a participation assignment so that before they take their in previously summer and winter course, they had to show that they've completed the um, introduction to online learning. Um, so we're going to do the same in the fall with our now uh, online courses because um, 
of COVID. So next slide. So the course has six modules, five modules of content, and each module has a short quiz that goes over the content in the module. In module two and module three, which module two is about Blackboard, how to use Blackboard, um, there are practice items like how to submit an assignment, how to take a test, etc. all the tools in Blackboard that are commonly used. And then in module three, which is using the technology at Binghamton that isn't Blackboard, so in our case, Zoom and Panopto, then there are practice items in there as well that deal with those items. And then in module six, we have a feedback survey that we use that, that data to improve the course. And then there's a final assessment at the end. Next slide. And basically these are the concept, the topics of the modules. The first one is just how to be an online learner and what, what is online learning. One of the things that we discovered in the switch, the emergency switch in the spring to online learning is that some students thought that online learning meant taking their computer to the classroom. So they didn't realize that online learning meant that they weren't coming to class anymore, that they were, everything was going to be online and it was difficult for them. So we have this first module that's just like, well, what is online learning? What's the difference between asynchronous and synchronous? What are some things that you need to think about in terms of academic integrity and whatnot? The second one, as I said, was about how to use Blackboard. The third one is about Zoom and Panopto. And the fourth one is about, um, how to be successful in online learning. So study strategies and, and et cetera. And then the fifth one, and this was actually, we didn't have this module. When, I, when we first got this slide deck from Michelle, I only had five modules. And then we had faculty review the course and said, you're really missing this student support services module. And you need to add this because the students sometimes don't know where to go. And so it would be nice to have one thing if you're having academic problems, here's where to go. If you're having blah, 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 here's where to go. And also how to use Starfish because it's not something that um, they're particularly trained on. So in this module five, it trains them on how to use Starfish and then it said, what all the offices do. Um, next slide. And then in each module, after they complete the quiz, they get an achievement in the Blackboard platform. So once they get the achievement, it shows up in, in black in the achievements area. And then when they finish all the modules and take the final exam, they get a certificate of completion that they can download a PDF of and then submit that to uh, a course if that's part of their um, course requirements. And so that's pretty much everything that we do. Um, that's it. So thank you. Great, thank you. So I can see uh, that there's a question. Do you want me yeah. to take that right now or do yeah. we want to wait till the end? I do. So well, so we're gonna do like a combo kind of thing, right? So um, we're gonna ask our participants to put any questions in the chat. And then as campuses complete their presentation, if you could go back through the chat and see if there are questions that you could answer. Um, and then if we have time at the end, we can surface them verbally. But I think we, at this point, we just sort of want to keep moving forward with the, with the presentation. We can also save the chat, by the way, and upload that as well. So you won't lose those answers and questions. So great. Thank you. Thanks for asking, Betsy. Uh, oh, and now to our friends at Buffalo. Excellent. David Cox and Luke Commissar from Buffalo State. I'm the Assistant Dean for Student Leadership and Engagement. And like many of you, we had lots of challenges. Uh, this year. Uh, one of our additional challenges was that I did not have an associate director uh, in charge of orientation until about two and a half weeks ago. So that was our added challenge on top of everything. Um, and we had to look at how we turned our large on-ground experience uh, into a virtual experience. Many of our Buffalo State students, particularly the ones uh, that are joining us from New York City, uh, did not have the chance to come up to Buffalo State this year. So as an added challenge, uh, they have never seen the campus, and so we need to figure out how to incorporate that into letting them view the campus as well. Um, so I'm going to start off today by turning it over to Luke to talk to you about how we've engaged the students um, at home right now. Many of the students wanted to engage with Buffalo State early and often, and so still while they're in high school, we've started to engage with them um, as a, a way to prevent melt early in the summer. Traditionally, we're preventing that melt after they come to orientation. Um, but the Student Leadership and Engagement Office has began that process of preventing melt now to get them to orientation. Uh, so I'm going to let Luke talk about how we're getting them to orientation. All right. 
Uh, so next slide, please. Um, so in terms of getting them here to campus, and just to, before we, we dive into that, one of the things that we've been talking to our staff about um, is that uh, while we do care about the structure and the process, uh, one thing we're still trying to remember with everything moving virtual and remote, um, a benefit of traditional orientation is not just that, that students are able to learn um, and what they need to do to prepare for the next step of their collegiate career, but also we, want, we care about the way that, that they feel and that experience and try to transition as much of that as possible um, to that virtual format. So while we've been uh, working a lot towards the, uh, the nuts and bol bolts and the protocols of orientation online um, and that student experience online, um, we, I actually just finished our uh, orientation leader training this morning. Empathy was a big part of that. And still instilling that within our students that you know, put yourself in the student's shoes, that you were new students at one point yourself. Um, we can't recreate that traditional format completely but just remember don't forget that empathy piece don't forget how we're making them feel to be part of our Bengal community still incorporate that pride and tradition and all the fun things you do during orientation in some capacity but don't let don't forget that empathy piece and the way you're making students feel um, in whatever component you do that the moment they log off they feel confident in their decision um, and that's, those are some guiding values in the work that we've been doing and what I would recommend. Um, so next slide, please. So what we created uh, this spring semester is our own virtual programming initiative. Um, and this is what we've been sharing with incoming high school students and prospective students uh, through social media and our website, uh, text messages to prospective students through the Office of Admissions. So it has been a collaborative effort um, and it is called uh, 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 Bengal Ambush. And the reason why we chose Ambush is that it's, it's another name for a group of tigers. Um, so that, that's the, the what behind th that is behind. So um, we're trying to create that student experience because students aren't able to come to campus. So the activities and organizations office, we've done a couple things um, from online programs, trivia, um, we're hosting a virtual involvement fair um, uh, through a program called Flipgrid, which I know a lot of people have been tinkering around which already. That's the one we selected. Um, and our student organizations have really hopped on. They're getting really excited to interact with incoming students. So it's just one piece of the puzzle um, that we don't want to forget with orientation is that social experience, that student experience, um, that, that they're craving for as part of orientation. So we don't wanna forget about that as we prepare them for the academic side of the house um, because our goal is to complement the academic mission and work in tandem with each other. Next slide, please. All right, David. Yeah, great. So all of that is available on our website, uh, sle.buffalostate.edu, which we can share in the group chat there. So you guys can see all the virtual programming that we've been offering and it's, it's available to anyone. So as far as our actual orientation format goes, we've got it listed up here on the screen. We are gonna be doing 75 live sessions for our students uh, and families. Those are broken down with 50 uh, participants max. Um, we feel that's how we can get the maximum engagement out of our students and families by having 50 uh, in the group. Um, we're expecting about 1,650 first year students, 900 transfer students this year, uh, as well as their families. So our sessions are broken up between the first year students, the first year family, transfer students, and the transfer family. So four different categories. Um, we don't want family members attending with their students. It's how we break up orientation traditionally on ground. It'll be the same way we break it up uh, virtually. So the family members will participate separately. Um, those sessions are offered all different times of the day, of the evening, uh, multiple days. So there's always an opportunity for someone uh, to attend. Um, after the sessions, they are available to have a one-on-one -on -one with what we call our BEAT team. Um, those are our orientation leaders. We call them the Bengal Experience and Transition Team. Um, so after orientation, if they need a one-on-one, -on -one, they didn't pick up what they needed, they didn't pick up what they wanted, they can schedule a Zoom session for just a one-on-one -on -one as well. Um, we feel that that'll give them the extra added push that they need to get uh, to Buffalo State in the fall. 
We have a texting platform called Mongoose that we text back and forth with students. Um, we find that's much more successful than them opening an email. Um, those of you guys that utilize Slate, we utilize Slate as our CRM. We can see when they're opening emails, we can see when they're opening text messages. They just aren't opening emails at this time, but they get back to us in text pretty quick. Um, we'll also be doing uh, social media tours. Uh, and then after they attend a live orientation session with us, they move into a static blackboard. Next slide, please. Um, during the orientation session, we're going to use a product called Blue Jeans. I know many of you have talked about Zoom. Uh, we're on a Zoom session right now. Uh, Blue Jeans is very similar to Zoom. Uh, there's some uh, additional opportunities when you use Blue Jeans. Uh, we feel it's a more secure platform. All of our video content that we're going to be using, our welcome message from the president, our videos from our various departments can all be uploaded into Blue Jeans and live within Blue Jeans so we don't have any streaming issues uh, back and forth. Um, Blue Jeans is a product, uh, doesn't require a download, it doesn't require any additional apps to be installed or any additional uh, things to be downloaded. So when we were looking at um, the software that we wanted to use to host the orientation session, this was a concern of ours. Um, we wanted to make sure that students could view our orientation from a phone um, using either a cell phone signal or Wi-Fi, public Wi-Fi, anything like that. So um, something that our IT department researched extensively for us. Um, so we're going to be using blue jeans uh, for that experience. Next slide. So it was important that we had live interactive content. So we're going to have student takeovers. We're going to have polling, breakout groups, et cetera. All these sessions will be recorded. They're going to have live analytics uh, available. We have sessions that are tailored specifically for our honor students. So they're gonna be broken out with just our honor students, our athletes. Um, we will have sessions for accessibility needs. Um, we have not had any come up at this time, but one of the nice things about doing live sessions is we can always schedule a separate session if we need to uh, for accessibility services, uh, should we need an interpreter or something like that on the call. Um, and we're going to take this group experience as we talked about and transition it to a one on one experience where the student can meet one on one with one of our beat team members um, and afterwards they can meet with an advisor as well. Next slide. So after the student attends the live session with us, uh, we're going to use a 90 minute to uh, one and a half hours to two hours, but 90 minute is our target for our first year students. Um, then they'll transition over into an asynchronous Blackboard. Um, so like many of the schools have been talking about, we have a Blackboard site that will contain all the content that we talked about in the live session, where they can go and rewatch the videos that we showed, rewatch the presentation we showed. But each of our academic departments has prepared content that will live in the Blackboard site for the students to go through. Um, we'll be uh, fulfilling our state and federal requirements through Title IX in the Blackboard, as well as the Clery Act and some other things. So students will be able to take their uh, quizzes and things like that in the Blackboard. So again, um, we'll be doing the live synchronous session and then that will transition over into an asynchronous Blackboard. Next slide. The students will also be scheduled for a one-on-one -on -one academic advising session. This is the third piece of our orientation. Um, this academic advising will be booked through what we call the Bengal Success Portal, Starfish. Um, so the students will learn how to use Starfish during the live session. Um, and they will be signed up and booking an appointment for a 30 minute academic advising session with their academic advisor. And that's the point where they will build out their schedule. Um, this is new to Buffalo State. Uh, traditionally, the student has their schedule built for them and we provide it at orientation. Uh, in this case, the advisors are gonna spend about 30 minutes with them on a Zoom conference call to build out their schedule after the student has attended an orientation session. Next slide. So once again, we have a three-step approach there. They're going to attend a live session with us. They're going to move over into a static blackboard, uh, and then they're going to have uh, an advising appointment with their advisor. And uh, so the registration begins uh, on May 1st. Students were able to start registering for uh, orientation. We've had uh, really great uh, registrations for orientation. Um, we're sitting somewhere around 70% of our acknowledged students are registered right now for orientation, which is uh, phenomenal numbers for us. We've never had such great numbers before, so I'm excited about that and we're doing really, really well uh, on our acknowledged numbers this year as well. Next slide. I'm gonna turn it back over to Luke to talk about the virtual involvement fair that will continue to happen as we work to prevent melt after orientation. Yeah, so this goes back to that, that's uh, current student piece, allowing students to engage with the current students at Buffalo State through a student organization involvement fair. Um, and a big piece of, you know, continuing our virtual involvement efforts 
um, is because we don't know what the fall will bring. And that's why we created Bengal Ambush um, to provide some consistency. So if there is some remote hybrid component in the fall semester, um, we are prepared and we did a lot of the legwork um, and incorporated it within orientation. So our new students are being taught um, that although we may be hybrid remote or whatever the fall will bring, um, there are still engagement opportunities and we, we train them on that and we share that with them uh, throughout the orientation months. Um, and in addition, another thing that we've been doing uh, is our social media life at Buff State, which is a glimpse and highlight into the student experience. It is separate from the Buffalo State College account um, run by our department. Um, but that is also an, a way we've been uh, pushing uh, our, our new students to find out ways to involve, get involved on campus. Um, but we're also going to, going to be doing um, different summer programs because usually during orientation we have a dance party or some type of craft night. Um, we're going to be doing trivias, uh, trivia nights, um, as well as we celebrate Orange Friday. Um, where we're going to be sending out free giveaway items, whether it's uh, AirPod cases or a t-shirt to 20 random students that engage with us. So, and those will just be for new students um, that, that we interact with. So those are some things that we, we're trying to do to keep them engaged um, throughout the campus, leading them into August and not just the static Blackboard and live session uh, to, to have a continual process. So it's a, it's a multi-faceted approach. Um, that to the credit uh, has been a, a team effort and not, not just David and I, I can't stress that enough. And I believe, I believe that's it. Okay, so in the spirit of flexibility and uh, <laughs> in the spirit of flexibility and what it means to try to do these things remotely, uh, I'm going to ask my colleagues to the empire to stop. One second, we're going to do a commercial break, and the commercial break is our students, so it's not a break at all. It's actually the reason we're here, right? Um, our students have a meeting at one o'clock, and so we want to make sure that we um, have a chance to hear from them. And we won't if we don't have them on now. So we're going to have them on now. Um, Jamie, you're asking me to highlight the Google form. Tell me about that. There were a lot of requests to have the link to the presentation recording sent oh, okay. and the presentation materials because a, a number of people didn't register. So what I did was I created a quick Google form for people to fill out their name and email so we could get that sent to everybody. And I, I um, put the link in the chat there. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, that's great. I'm, I'm sure I missed it in the chat. So sorry about that. So I am going to ask our colleague Rosso, Rocco Rosselli to introduce our student guests and we will go from there. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having us here today. Um, like Michelle mentioned, my name is Rocco Roselli, and I'm the lead college counselor at Washington Heights Expeditionary Learning School. Um, today, you know, we're able to invite two of our students that are attending SUNY in the fall. Um, Ricardo Herrera, who will be attending SUNY New Paltz through the EOP program, and Jade Pimentel, who will be attending um, SUNY Stony Brook through the EOP program as well. Um, they're two amazing students, leaders in our community. Um, I know they're excited to be here. So um, Jade, Ricardo, can you please unmute um, yourselves and also introduce your, yourself. Um, hi. Um, okay, now. <laughs> Let me uh, turn on my camera. Can you guys see me? No. Yep. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Jade Pimentel. I, as Rocco said, I'm going to SUNY Stony Brook through the EOP program. Yeah, and Ricardo. My name is Ricardo, um, and I'm, as Rocco said before also, I'm attending a SUNY New Pulse through the EOP program as well. Great, welcome to you both. Uh, so we had some questions. We asked you to think about um, some questions. Jamie, I think they're towards the end of the slide deck. 
uh, maybe, I don't know, slide 52 or something like that. And welcome, both of you, to SUNY, to the EOP family, and certainly to your campuses. So, you know, we're here today, right, because all of us want to make sure that we're doing a good job of inviting you and welcoming you and giving you the information um, that you need. So, you know, I guess one of, one of my questions for you um, is if, if you're sort of like imagining, right, what's the, what are some of the top questions that you have about being a new student um, on your campus this year, particularly when we think about uh, you know, going maybe to some, of, some or all of your classes online. Um, this can be an open discussion, but I think just sort of maybe thinking about a general question might be a great place to start. So, uh, Jade, do you want to start with that one? Um, like, so can you repeat, like, what exactly it is that, um, uh, so do we have to ask a question that we have? Oh, I'm asking, no, so I'm a teacher. I'm always asking you the questions, right? <laughs> Here's the first question, right, it's awful. Here's the first question. Um, so uh, if you had to think of one or two things that you really would like to know about as you embark on this new journey as a new college student, what are they? What do we, what do we want, what do we need to tell you? What do we need to help you with? Um, I mainly would like to know since like, especially with like COVID-19 and everything, um, is if we were to like move, be able to move on campus, would the classes be, would it work better if the classes were to like half of it be online? If there would like to be a big, like a big class, like for example, a lecture class or something, would that part be online? And then, um, some classes we would actually be able to go to um but like yeah i feel like that's something i would like to know because that's something like for me going to stony brook i would actually like that more have the bigger classes be virtually and then be able to also mix that in with physical classes um another thing i'm not sure necessarily because uh you haven't been here yet, right? Like it's, yeah. a, it's a weird question. I'd right? like to get to know the area. I wish to be able to get to know the area. Right, assuming the actual geographic area of your campus. Yeah. So that's interesting. Would it help you? So one idea that we had was to have students do, um, or you know, our colleagues do videos of the actual physical campus. Would something like that help you? So you could like kind of visualize it live. Is it just like you you actually want to be there? Um, I know that virtual tours do help, but I wish that I would actually have the chance to physically be able to like feel the environment. Because right. a lot of things feel different virtually than they do physically. And I know I've never been to Stony Brook, like the Stony Brook campus. So like I would have loved to actually been able to get to know about it and get like a feel of how the school feels like. But yeah. I know that the virtual tours do help because it gets me, it gives me like an image of what the school actually like looks like, but I would have loved to actually be able to physically go there myself. Thank you. And Ricardo, same question for you. Um, oh, so first, I want to say I, I apologize for like the time um, movement as well and the inconvenience. Um, I just I just wanted to kind of say that, but I have a couple questions that I kind of have in mind, and one of those questions would be for the summer orientation, since students that um, are eligible for EOP to the EOP program, um, the summer orientation is basically allowing students to kind of have a um, kind of experience on the campus of the college, if I'm correct, our university. And so I wanna know how will colleges kind of, um, um, will manage, you know, those new incoming students and kind of have them adjust to the life of um, the campus uh, as a quick, you know, a quick time because um, during the first year or during the orientation, students will kind of already kind of ha know, you know, where to navigate, how the um, campus is, and so I want to know how will, you know, colleges kind of um, 
help adjust the students into the camp into the into the campus um i guess during the second year or maybe hopefully um during the second semester and then another question i have is um even even um like since during this um pandemic with COVID-19 um i know things have changed and i know that you know especially for me as a senior at wheels um you know, I really want to go to um, the orientation, you know, visit my college since I haven't really been able to. And I want to know how will colleges kind of make up that time, you know, for the online learning and that whole experience of kind of being at the college because um, I know that kind of so, sort of like a, one of the purposes of kind of going to college, especially um, away from home, is kind of to be in a whole different environment, experience, meet new people and kind of have a connection with, you know, professors, staff members, you know, people just around the area because it's like a whole small, you know, community. And so I want to know how will colleges kind of make up that time for the new um, students that are coming in and kind of um, still have that experience, um, even though they weren't really able to be there. Got it. Those are really important questions. Really important questions. So I wonder if anyone on the call, um, if your campus has thought about that, and we might not have the answer. So, uh, so Jada and Ricardo, a piece of the purpose of having you here is that um, my assumption is you might ask questions that we've actually not thought about how to answer them, right? Like we, and, and so helping us think through, so Ricardo, to your point, like what are you, what are you going to do when we come back to campus, right? Like, so we, we're thinking so much about how to help you be maybe remote or online or some sort of like mix of the two, I hear you saying, okay, when this ends and, and you do come to campus, how are we going to make sure that your cohort of students in particular um, uh, will be welcome? So I think it's a great, I mean, I think, I think I'm paraphrasing you correctly. I think it's a great question. And there's a lot of really good um, uh, chat going on. Uh, so if anyone wants to unmute and join in, um, please do. Michelle, I'll jump into that. One of the things that yeah. we do at Buffalo State, that those are great questions and thank you for those. And that those are something that uh, at Buffalo State, we spend a lot of time thinking about and trying to figure out. Um, at Buffalo State specifically, we have two main social media channels and one of them is the official Buffalo State College. Um, and the other one is called Life at Buff State. And so Life at Buff State is run by my department um, and it's really for our students and focused on the students. Um, so one of the things that we often do is social media takeovers. Um, and so we allow what we call our beat team, our Bengal experience and transition team, or our orientation leaders uh, to take that over during the summertime. Um, and they do takeovers, right? Just what their average day looks like on campus. Um, they tour the campus. They show all the different areas on campus, but from a student perspective, um, to really kind of try to give you a feel of that and also of the surrounding community. Buffalo State um, happens to be an urban campus or in the city. So um, a lot of walkable stuff. So we try to give the students a feel um, of what it's like to be there um, and how we're going to address things when we return. Um, we have scheduled um, additional programming uh, for what we call Bengal Bound. So that's the week before school happens. So when you finally return to on campus, if we're able to, uh, given the situation with COVID, um, we're going to enhance our programming during that time to replace some of the social aspects of orientation. We're going to be putting that in uh, your welcome weeks and, and when you would come back. So we certainly want to make sure you still get all those aspects that would happen at orientation. Um, it would just happen that week that you move in um, rather than during orientation. So we're going to try our best to do everything that we can virtually, but uh, when you come back, we're going to certainly make sure you have that experience as well. Yep. And, I, and so I think a piece of this too is that, you know, there's 150 or so people on this call and they will take this information out to the other campuses, right? So I can't, I, I'm not looking at all the participants, so I'm not sure. I'm sure somebody from either New Paltz or Stony Brook is here. And if they're not, we can tell them what your question was, right? So that's the, the benefit of this sort of system approach that we have um, to your individual campuses. So, so thanks for the questions. Um, uh, Chris, I see in the chat that you said to Jade, please remember faculty are human and we were all freshmen. We sure were, and I didn't know what I was doing. Let me go on record as saying that. So um, uh, we know that this is, you know, a particularly vexing time, but also, you know, it's an opportunity, I think, for you to make, um, you know, a statement 
something um, you can affect some change at your campuses because it's so unique to your particular incoming class. Um, it's reminding us of what we can do better, both face-to-face -face and online. Um, does anyone else have any comments to our students? Because we have other questions and prompts we can discuss. John? Uh, yes. So Rocco and Jade, I just want to tell you how proud I am of you and the questions that you just asked. I just messaged my colleague, Candy Griffin Jenkins, of how how thoughtful those questions uh, were. But let me just say this. Uh, this week, uh, it is my understanding uh, that the governor is going to make an announcement either this week or next week regarding the reopening for SUNY. And so that should really be very helpful because it's going to be a sort of a phased reopening. And, to the, and for, for your campus that you will be attending, I want you to kind of be on the lookout for that information and whether or not your campus is going to be a part of that early reopening. Uh, the other thing I'd like you to do is, uh, and I'm sure you're probably already doing this, is keep abreast of the communication that you're receiving from your campus, because I do think that they're going to be sending you out some information on almost a, a regular basis, especially when, the, when they, we have a reopening uh, date set. And so the information will be flowing to you, but I think those questions that you asked were just outstanding. And I like the comment made by the colleague about, remember when we were freshmen and that whole piece about empathy, I, I think it's spot on. So thank you so much. I just wanted to offer those uh, thoughts to you. That's great, John, thank you. Um, and the other, I mean, the other piece of it um, is that you have your whole EOP family, right? And I, we just did an online orientation um, um, webinar with our EOP counselors. And I can say um, with a great deal of pride that EOP at SUNY is an extremely important, well-resourced, well-honed pillar of excellence gesture when it comes to student supports. And if you have any questions, find your advisors, find your faculty. They will, they will, they will want to know. They will absolutely want to know. Um, and they can uh, guide you in ways that um, uh, other, you know, other programs might not be able to do or might not be resourced to do. So that's a really good thing. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, it's great. So I'm, so I'm curious, uh, what are you most looking forward to in the fall? Like, what are you excited about? Um, I feel like I'm very excited for like, the activities and like the different clubs and just like how different it is from my high school because my high school was pretty small and like it didn't have a lot of things for me to do so i really look forward to like the different like again the different activities and also the type of classes they have because the community is just so much bigger and it's much more open so i really like that because i don't really like being closed so much so i know that definitely in college, I really look forward to being more physically active because like they have more um, more like different types of sports and like, again, those activities that require me to be more active that my high school wasn't available to have. So I really look forward to that. Um, as for me, I'm kind of looking forward for like the whole new um, experience, especially um, with like the opportunities and kind of um, the courses that I'll be taking in the fall. And it's something that like, I'm really sort of nervous about, but also excited for because it's like you're entering a whole new like area that you wouldn't really um, be accustomed to and learning about the whole environment and kind of knowing that um, you have a, a support system there immediately once you get there, it, it's really like kind of like um, heartwarming and also kind of welcoming uh, because because, you know, as like a student, you know, I'm going to be attending um, New Falls and I won't really have, you know, all my friends there, you know, I'll probably maybe have a couple, but not all of them. And so kind of entering a, an area that, you know, I would basically sort of be alone as an individual, it's, it's going to be a bit different for me because um, as like, I'm a bit shy, you know, um, I don't, I don't like to socialize too much, but, you know, I know that I'm going to have to uh, break, you know, my shell kind of um, persevere out my comfort zone and kind of meet everyone there and then get accustomed to the to the environment 
Yep. So Jade, I just started to type back to you, uh, but I'll say that loud. I didn't either. I didn't know any. I attended Binghamton, and I didn't know any anyone who went to Binghamton at the time. So it was it was weird, right? It was intimidating. Um, so uh, you know, again, I think I mean personally, I would encourage you to find your peer groups, right? But within your courses, within the extracurricular activities, I think um, colleagues on the call. How are we thinking through, this might be a rhetorical question, we might not have a response, but I think we just heard that the diverse experiences of college, right? So now we're not in high school anymore and we can start to think through larger socio-political groups, right? Our, our activities, um, you know, the various ways in which our identities are formed, our interests are cultivated. How are we thinking through how to um, make some of those experiences available to our incoming students in the fall. Are there any concrete plans out there? Hmm. Okay. Uh, um, so yeah, not, not to bring up Buff State again, it's one of the things that we have been hiring, bringing about the co-curricular um, mm -hmm. was that and we, we were actually talking about this before COVID. We just ha didn't have an idea how to do it. Um, we are redesigning our leadership program to be hybrid, um, our leadership certificate program, something that you just don't have to be on campus for. Um, and, and that's the Bengal Stripes Leadership Program. And so we've been collaborating with a lot of our campus partners um, to provide uh, workshops that focus um, on diversity and inclusion, on leadership development, on career readiness, so resume writing, uh, cover letter cover letter writing, and it's not it's a, something that a lot of a lot of schools already do, which is great. Um, we have used um, you know this remote learning uh, as an opportunity to create a hybrid leadership program, but also to then connect to our commuter students and non traditional stu students who may not who may feel left out. So we're trying to be as inclusive as possible. And it's a program that we feel after all of this, we can continue in that form to hit those pockets of students that we tend to leave out. And, and we're starting to acknowledge that um, and be open about that. So that, that's one thing is our, our Bengal Stripes Leadership Program, switching that uh, to a hybrid format. Mm -hmm. That's great. No, that's great. Um, this is Jenny from Finger Lakes Community College. Hi guys, I'm so excited to see your faces. Um, so we actually, uh, unbeknownst to us again, it's kind of in line with Buff State, um, we're not necessarily prepared for all this online. So really grace is really needed right now. Um, but we actually have a warrior series, which is a partnership we actually have with our local community business owners. And we actually prepped this prior to our start. Um, it was a program we hosted on, on campus and it was uber you know successful but we were still missing students um so this actually we were able to build within our blackboard platform um working with our online learning folks to actually create this we now have this available to roll out so this is also where you know as you're navigating this hence why michelle um wanted to make sure you guys were on here is make sure your voices are heard so as you're going through if you're feeling like you're missing something you're both going to great schools um with a lot of wonderful resources is, but don't be afraid um, to make sure that if you're like, oh, I'm still not making those connections, to make sure to let us know, because that's something that really you own that college experience. And if you don't have it compared to what, um, making sure you're connecting with your peers in different ways. Um, so I'm so excited for you both. That's awesome. And this is Matthew from Monroe Community College up in Rochester, New York. Hello, everyone. Um, so we are starting our, our normal student life first year experience programming in July. And we're really promoting it to our new students, but we're really trying to build community and excitement. And we're partnering with our diversity offices. We're partnering with our leadership offices. We're really trying to engage our students virtually. And then we're also looking at our fall programming because we don't know what fall program is gonna look like, but we're definitely gonna have a hybrid model component so that we can you know, build off um, and really support our students online. But if we do have students on campus, we can provide that student support experience and provide that student life experience for our students, so. That's great, thanks everyone.
So would you, Jade and Ricardo, be up for the first question? Are you comfortable enough to answer that one? Because we always want to know, why did you decide to come to college at all this fall, right? With all of these questions, all of the unknowns, what made you decide to say this is going to be for us? Um, I know that I came to my Stony Brook decision, like it was very hard. I know that my cousin used to go to Stony Brook, but then he transferred to Binghamton. But um, I know that it was technically hearing everything that he had to say about it inspired me and also like what other um, teachers would say and they would think that like Stony Brook would fit me. And I know that it was very hard because I was scared to go away and like money was a problem. But like Stony Brook eventually became like the closest, but not too close and like the most affordable option for me. Um, it doesn't necessarily have what I really want to, like, what I really want to study, but not a lot of schools have it. Um, but it's good enough because it's a very interesting school. And it, it, I know that I, under, I came to understand that it does fit me because it's just as, like, different and, like, unique as I am in a way. So I really grew to love it even before going to it. But yeah. So you know we're going to ask, what is it that you really want to study, right? Like that was paid, right? We yeah. have to ask the question. Okay. Um, I really wanted to study zoology. Um, it's very different. Like you don't really see that a lot in New York. But I really want to study zoology. I got it from my dad. I have an interest in like animals, and I really, really am interested in that and in the sciences. But yeah, I'm gonna be taking it one step at a time, trying out different things that could lead me up to that. Yeah, that's my interest. I love that. That's great. How about you, Ricardo? Um, so what inspired me to kind of um to like to go to college like first um, in general is um is like main, mainly my uh, motivation, my purpose, and that's um something kind of relating to like my family. You know, you know, my parents weren't able to go to college. And so I kind of want to fill in that gap for them and kind of accomplish something for them to know that, you know, uh, coming, coming here, you know, to the U.S. was like the best, the best choice they made. You know, they gave me all these opportunities. They gave me, you know, um, resources, everything that I needed in order to succeed. And so as, you know, a student from a low income background, um, picking a college was a bit difficult because, you know, I didn't really think I would have... Um, the financial, you know, support or kind of the money to kind of pay off for the college. And that was something I always looked into when I was um, searching for colleges. And also, you know, what really helped me kind of to navigate through that was, um, you know, my college counselor, Rocco. He really helped me a lot during this process of picking out a college, seeing what really best fits for me and kind of understanding, you know, what I want to kind of learn, you know, what, what's the major I want to go into for these four years that I'm going to be doing. And so... <laughs> And so, you know, Rocco helped me kind of, you know, like get a list, you know, he got me, he found a list for me, you know, I checked the little colleges to see what, you know, what found my best interest. And afterwards, we kind of just, you know, cut it down, you know, see what was the best top choices. And, you know, then I chose, you know, New Pulse. And mainly um, the reason why was because, you know, it, it had the opportunities I wanted, you know, they had clubs like the economic club. They also had a climate action uh, club, which I'm really inter interested in because, um, I advocate for environmental uh, justice, and that's something that I'm really proud of doing. And they also had, you know, like fun little clubs as well. I think it was one was um, Humans versus Zombie Club. And I really found that, you know, funny because, you know, they have something really, you know, something that's like out of the zone, you know. It doesn't really have to be based on, you know, academic. It could just be something for fun. And that's something I really found um, interesting and really funny about. And also, you know, the distance as well, you know, how long, far it is, you know, I can't to go far i want to come back home you know visit my family as well and yeah that's just mainly kind of what kind of inspired me as well and kind of motivated me you know i really appreciate also like Rocco helping me throughout this whole journey as well so ricardo i'm laughing because i'm thinking who's going to make the 2020 joke zombies might as well right we haven't had that yet this year let's invite that possible topic that's great. Thank you both for sharing that. I mean, it's a pretty, it's a pretty intimate question and we've known you for, I don't know, 37 seconds. So thank you. 
for telling us that. It helps us to understand um, how to connect with you. Um, and you've actually answered a lot of the prompts that we have here. Does anyone on the call have um, any questions or comments for our guests? I'm watching our time. We have four minutes left. John Graham, I see you on mute. Hi, Michelle. I would, I would like to ask um, Ricardo and Jade, what are some of the thoughts or concerns and questions that maybe their peers have? Because they've just spoke eloquently about their, their, uh, their issues, their background, their experiences. What are their peers saying? Just curious, if their classmates. Like classmates from like high school or classmates that we're gonna... I think you're muted. The same, okay, I'm sorry. The same thoughts that you had, Jade, about uh, your major, uh, the proximity, the affordability, those things that you sort of listed out. Uh, and I just wanted to know what might some of your classmates were thinking when they were uh, considering going to college? And the same question for Ricardo. Um, I know that for my peers, it was also very hard for them, but most of them already had like a solid idea of what it was that they wanted to study. I know that for me, I was like very all over the place. I kept changing everything. So that's why I decided to go into Stony Brook as an undecided so that I can make that decision when I'm actually sure of what it is that I want to do. But I know that a lot of my peers, they were just, most of them were very solid and others really had no idea what it was that they wanted to do or where they wanted to go. But I know that I helped them, um, I've had them list out what exactly they were interested in and what possible schools they were also interested in. And that ultimately made them get to their decisions. Okay, thank you, that's good. We also just had one question in the chat about uh, what your biggest fears are when you're starting a new college. Um, I, I could answer that question. So one of like one of the biggest fears I have, um, especially starting at a new college, um, I, I think it's. I mean, I got like a couple, but like like maybe two of my biggest fears, like <laughs> it's like kind of making friends. You know, I, I don't really know anyone there, and like I come from a whole different like background. So you know. Um, maybe the way I am is different to many other people. And, you know, some may find it kind of, you know, a bit like, you know, kind of in a way that they don't like it or may, some may kind of like it. And um, that's something I always kind of like kind of feared about and nervous about because I don't know if I'll be able to make a group of friends that will help me also. And that also leads into like kind of um, having support, you know, if I'm stuck on an assignment in my course and I don't really have friends, you know, I, I don't know how I'll be able to kind of, um, get help you know let's say it's like at let's say it's like a midnight you know the professor you know it's it's not really it's like asleep maybe and you know the only people I have left is you know my friends and if I don't have any friends you know I'm kind of stuck there it's like you know I don't know what to do so that's something that I always feared about you know uh when starting uh and in going into a new college I agree with uh Ricardo I know that I'm not necessarily scared of a lot because I've made a lot of progress throughout the years and that it's like it's prepared me for this moment. But I know I'm also scared of not making enough friends because I'm, I'm very antisocial most times. And I know that when I did a summer college program last year, I did not. It was not social at all. Ricardo knows this. I did not leave my room. But I know that I won't do that same mistake when I go to college. But it's mainly like I'm scared of the like the classes and if it's too hard sometimes and I'm scared that I'll give up, but I doubt that I will. But it's still a fear that I have, but yeah. <laughs> Did you hear all that colleagues? They just gave us a lot of information, didn't they? It's fantastic. So I'm looking at the time, we're at exactly one o'clock. I don't wanna make you late for your next. Uh, meeting. I could, we cannot thank you enough. You've given us amazing information. We appreciate your candor, your willingness to be here, your honesty, 
here we are just a bunch of dopey faces on a screen. And uh, there are a number of people in the chat who are saying reach out if you need assistance. They mean it, I mean it, we all mean it. And your EOP folks will help you in ways that I could not even possibly capture in a closing thank you sentence. John, any closing thoughts? No, I'm, I'm wishing you both exceptionally well. And uh, Jade, I tell you, you really made my day because uh, there's a place called Plum Island, and that's where all the exotic animals that come into the United States get quarantined. So I want you to look at that. Look that up, Plum Island. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you both so much. Have a good, enjoy your meeting. Have a great afternoon. People are asking me privately if I'm crying because I always cry when students come on. Yes, I am, people. Always, because this is why we do the work we do. Of course I'm crying. Absolutely. You guys have this. You got it. Good luck. Thank um, you. Thank you. I just want to Take thank care. you again for inviting us. Um, thank you, thank Ricardo you so much. and Jay. You both Marco, are absolutely you. phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you. So this, so this is why I wanted the students to go last because like then I, now I don't even know what to say. Hey, I'm, thank God it's my home campus now, right? Ashley and Alana. I because, <laughs> That's I what know. I'm thinking. How do I follow well, up? <laughs> right? So Ashley, you know, right? You know why we wanted right. them to, to be last, right? We couldn't because anyway, it doesn't matter. Say that thing. So, so was it, didn't they give us a lot of information, fellow human beings on this call? Uh, and I also want to pitch something for next week. But without further ado, let's flip to my home campus, which actually is interesting. It's an interesting pivot because we just heard from two traditionally aged students. And historically, Empire State College is sort of the neo-traditional, uh, you know, more adult student. And we also do lots of stuff uh, remotely online at a distance for a number of years. So that was a pretty good transition. Not bad. Okay. And I'll, now I'll stop crying. Go. Go, Ashley. Go, Lana. Go, go. Go, team, go. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle, so much. Um, so, yeah, we're Ashley and Elena, and we're going to talk to you a little bit today about SUNY Empire State College's online orientation. Um, you already gave a nice segue as to who we are. Um, and we actually, pre-COVID, back in late February, just before COVID, uh, we had decided to redesign our online orientation, both from a content and, and a delivery perspective. So we're going to share some of those highlights with you today. Um, so you can go ahead to the next slide. So our orientation is mandatory for all undergraduate students, and we deliver it in an asynchronous format that is self-paced and offers students the ability to stop and start as needed, uh, similar to some of the other or online orientations we've seen. Um, but we really took a long, hard look at orientation over the past year and decided that we really wanted to redefine it as, as an ongoing process that delivers just-in-time supports, resources, information, that type of thing throughout the entire first term. So we start right as you're accepted and that orientation process continues on. That said, this piece, this online orientation piece, um, is the first part and that is what you need to complete in order to register for your courses and that's what we'll focus on today. Um, so we are going live with this this month and the goal of this orientation is to provide students with the resources and information needed as you can see to begin their first term. Um, so just as an example, in this orientation, we introduce students to the online library, right? We don't have a brick and mortar library for obvious reasons. Um, I should mention, for those of you who don't know, we have over 30 locations, um, but we also deliver quite a bit of our courses and our resources and services online um, so that we can mirror whatever we're providing at the locations in the online setting as well. Um, so we introduce you to our online orientation, but we don't show you how to navigate it in the online orientation. We do that later on through an initiative called Jumpstart um, that kind of operates as, you know, later on orientation. It's right in the first week of the term, and that's where we show you how to navigate our library, how to get in touch with our uh, librarians, and then we have webinars and workshops that continue on through the term. So that's kind of what this um, longer term orientation process looks like. 
Um, so you can go ahead to the next slide. Um, so one of the things that we included that this is a little bit new for us and we didn't have in some of our prior orientations um, is we really wanted our students to feel welcome and part of our community and that they really belonged here. Um, so this is a way for students to see who their peers are and hopefully they'll be able to find some shared experiences and identities. Um, so you can see a majority of our students are working full time. They have children and their age is 25 and older. Um, and almost half of our students identify as first generation college students and a significant number identify as active duty um, military or veteran students. So you can go ahead to the next slide. At the very end of our orientation, we include this welcome video that we want to play for you. It's a welcome video from our faculty and staff. Um, and again, this is to showcase that we're really diverse. Um, you'll see um, the, if, I hope you can hear it, that the faculty and staff welcome the students um, in English and then in their um, home languages. Um, and so this is really that idea, again, to promote that welcoming environment, minimize the anxiety, and really create that sense of belonging. Go ahead. Oh, I'm gifted. Welcome. 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 A cabo. That means welcome too. Marhaba. Mawuya. Fine. Vitaje. Oshkandes. Dabro Pajalavat. Namaste. Bienvenidos. At SUNY Empire State College, we are strengthened by each other and by our diversity. No matter who you are, no matter who you are, no matter who you are, or where you are from, come, be part of our community. You are welcome here. You are welcome here. And you're welcome here. You're welcome here. And as the, the video finishes, we also have other introductions from students and faculty weave throughout the orientation to add this touch because the whole orientation is uh, asynchronous. Yeah. And we can move on to the next slide. Yeah, and I would just make one more note on the welcoming students. The other thing we did is when we did all of our videos and voiceovers for this orientation, we use the second rather than third person language. So we don't you know, talk about students do this or students do that. It's always you, you the student, um, you as a member of our community. Um, so, okay, on this slide, you'll see, this is our main um, landing page, the, the main menu for the orientation. And in the past, the content focused heavily on academics. So things like ways to study, degree planning, your mentor relationship. Um, and over the past two years, a lot has changed. We have a new ERP and CRM. We introduced a comprehensive student portal and we added some new policies and procedures such as our Dean's List. And so we really wanted to showcase all of those and make sure that students understood that they exist and then how to navigate things like our student portal. But we were also getting a lot of student questions around paying for college and how to register for courses. So we put all of that content in too as part of the content that students really need to know to get started. Um, and the veteran and military content you see on the end only pops up if the students self-identify, so they can do that right in the orientation. You can go ahead to the next slide. So I'm gonna have you go ahead and um, click play. The glossary down at the bottom, this is what we're gonna play for you. So we actually included a searchable glossary. Um, and this is because higher education has its own language, we all know that, and SUNY Empire has its own language on top of that. And so we um, put together this nice, easy to search glossary so that students could look up the terms that they needed and find the definitions. And that's available um, throughout the orientation. They can always fall back on this page and go search that glossary. The other thing we did is you see that my ESC right next to the glossary, you can go ahead and flip the slide and play that video. Um, and that's a screenshot of the portal with question marks. And those question marks show the descriptions of what be is behind each icon. 
And we really want students to be fluent in the portal as this is where they'll go for all the activity associated with being a student. So you can see here how to register in self-service banner, their email and all the associated Office 365 products. So we've really woven references to and images of the portal throughout this orientation. So here in the mentor relationship section, you go through some videos and some information about your mentor relationship, but then you're shown where to locate your mentor's name. Um, and we do that also in the academic support section here under resources for success. Um, we show you where to find all of the resources and personnel that provide academic support at the institution. And I am now going to, yeah, so I know there have been some questions on delivery and Alina is going to answer all of the questions about what we built it in, how we deliver it. And I'm going to turn it over to her right now and you can go ahead to the next slide. Thank you, Ashley. So as uh, Ashley mentioned, we actually in this, um, with this re redesign, with this project, we were addressing different issues than many of the other campuses we're dealing with in the past time. Um, our issue was is that pre previous orientation was built and hosted in Moodle rooms and it was text heavy. We used some videos, talking head videos type of um, videos, but, and, uh, but it was text heavy. Used the, the, there were some quizzes for interactions. Um, another issue was that in Moodle rooms, when students get into the orientation, they go through this, then automatically they get unenrolled and they lose accent. They lose accent access to that orientation. And as you know, a lot of information in, in our orientations are useful later during the semester. And one more thing too, in Moodle rooms, we structured it so that students would progress through it by um, going through step by step. So some content was locked and sometimes they would get stuck. And as you know, in LMS, we can't provide this just in time feedback. So if they, they're stuck, we, we can just have a message pop up and explain what they need to do next to, to be able to move on. So all these issues, we had all these issues and we looked at them and we looked at our options and uh, assessed the tools we had available. And as Christine, I see responding in the chats, we selected to use Storyline Articulate, which is one of the top e-learning tools in e-learn industry, we still have to use model rooms to, for enrollment purposes, for tracking purposes, but the file, the storyline, the final, the overall orientation file sits in model rooms. And what it allows us to do, it solves the problem of access. So students still get enrolled in Moodle, they go through the process, they get unenrolled for automation purposes, but they will get an email after that congratulating them on completion of their orientation with the link to this file hosted openly on our website. So they still will have access to all these resources. And on top of it, it, it is also responsive design so they can view it on their mobile phone, tablet, or um, computer. Then it also addressed the issue of um, the just-in-time support because Storyline Articulate is more granular. If students don't know what to click, we can have the message pop up and explain it, what they need to do next. And we have a lot of this stuff, directions built in already, but we're gonna test the final product with students so we can cover more areas. And another thing is the text-based. Uh, Storyline being a product for e-learning, it kind of um, forcing you to redesign it, to make it more digestible, to chunk your information, make it more visual. And we can go on to the next slide. We have a few examples of, to show how we structured the, this information. In this example, it's just shown the infographic, um, and you can play it, please. Oh no, this sec that's the next slide we jumped a bit. So we broke information to digestible pieces. We put it into visual, organized it visually, and then we're Senior getting there. State College has Added narrations where appropriate. To enrich your experience with us. 
Click on the icons for examples of the opportunities available to you as a student. So that's one example. And we have different kind of visuals and uh, options. We have a wonderful team of instructional designers and, mul and multimedia designers who have been working on this project. And uh, we can go to the next slide just to show that we've built a lot of videos that are all very short, digestible. We've used Vion tool if anyone is interested to build them. And we can play it. This one is 40 seconds long, so. Brandon is a father of two young children. He has a full-time job and a supporting partner. He is working on getting his bachelor's degree in human resource management. To keep his life, work, and studies in balance, he usually dedicates time to his family when he gets home and works on his studies when his kids are in bed. He is choosing to take online courses since they allow him to set his own schedule. Even when he needs to travel for his job or with his family, he can still continue his studies since all the coursework and interactions with the students and faculty are done online inside the learning management system called Moodle Rooms. Brandon follows best practices and logs in and participates in his course at least three times per week. So that's one of one of the example. Whenever possible, we develop videos and and different combinations of different type of content. And the next one, next slide will show you example of a interactive activity we build in, which is drag and drop activity, um, just to check the knowledge and understanding of the content and students actually don't need to do it. They can just click submit and just show responses. So it's not a required option. It's not a required activity. Um, another thing, and if there are instructional designers in this group, they would know that drag and drop activity is not accessible, but we're going to have all this content available also in another format. We're going to have it in a Word document and PDF document, and we're working closely with our accessibility office to make sure they have all the information and alternative formats. Um, so these are just some examples. We're really excited about this um, because I, we think it's going to make it much more engaging, digestible for our students. It's going to put it, this orientation information available much easier and when they need it to, once they complete orientation, they can go back to this same time. We're going to be gathering feedback all the time too, so we can keep improving things. And um, overall, the project just to to finish up our presentation, it was fascinating to be working in such a um, collaborative way. We have so many departments working on this project that that's just really, really good experience. And on top of it, working with students when we're gonna be testing with it, this product. That's great, thank you so much. Um, uh, so I think we need to keep moving forward. There's a few questions in the chat. Um, we will turn that up for your legs. Hello, everyone, and I am going to be cognizant of time. Andrea and I just were texting back and forth. Um, so we are going to speed through this um, just to make sure that everybody gets an opportunity to present. Um, we are Finger Lakes Community College. We are located in the heart of the Finger Lakes. Um, we have three campus centers as well, and we welcome home about 1,000 to 1,500 new students, both fall and spring as a combo. Our new student orientation program, you can switch to the next slide. Andrea Brown is our assistant director. Sorry again, just trying to be cognizant. Um, uh, our new student orientation program is non mandatory, and we hold our sessions between the first or second week prior to our full start. Um, we don't use the word mandatory, but for many of our campuses, we do have to hint at them because there is New York State mandates that students must complete during their onboarding phases. Um, but we are proud to say that um, both are in person and are online. Um, we have higher than national average for non mandatory show rates um, for the past six years and counting. Um, five years ago, we saw that there was a need of addressing more of our commuter student population um, who were not able to attend some of our face-to-face -face orientation programs due to family or work obligations. So we did 
a launch of a lot of research and we landed with a company called the Manage Design Group as our online orientation platform. Um, we used this as a catch-all prior to COVID-19 um, as a way we actually didn't ever tell students that we had online orientation because we knew our face-to-face -face yielded higher retention rates. So we would use it only after we've exhausted during their summer registration process showing they couldn't actually come. You can switch to the next slide. Um, and if they, they couldn't actually come to them. Um, but this was a way for us to be able to connect with everyone. Uh, we do troubleshoot not only as our student life team, but with our Advantage Design Group, they offer support year round, but we primarily focus on that during our fall and spring timeline. And there is an annual subscription fee to that. So I wanna make sure that folks know that. And for fall, we will be going fully online, um, which was a decision that was made most recently. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, next slide, please. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Brown, Assistant Director of Student Life. Um, our online orientation has always served both online only students, as well as those face-to-face -face that may not be able to make it to one of our on-campus sessions, as Jenny mentioned. Uh, we've always done our best to ensure that both on-campus and online programs mirror each other as much as possible with regard to content. If anything, we're able to cover more of a breadth of information um, online, since on campus we're obviously limited in time and the number of speakers we can squeeze into a session, um, though of course on campus allows for more depth of material. Um, for example, an office that might have a, a 20 to 30 minute presentation on campus only has one to three slides in an online program. Uh, one of the benefits, if you will, of our crisis this year is that it's given us access to more tools and just a different way of interacting than we have before. Um, so new for fall 2020, uh, we'll be going online with um, our, this is the only version of orientation we'll have, as Jenny mentioned, um, and we're going to add some synchronous components to it, uh, meet and greet sessions via WebEx for both students, as well as for uh, parents and families, because we've always held a, a parent program on campus as well. Um, and we're in the process of filming a campus tour. I know that was one of the concerns for the students. Um, and that's one component that has been missing from our online orientation. So we're gonna make sure we have a, a more robust tour of campus um, and also put more emphasis in online student success since we anticipate that um, at least a good chunk of our classes will still be remote in the fall. Next slide, please. So with us being in this world for five years, we've learned a lot. So one of the things we wanted to take time really quickly is to highlight some of the challenges we encountered and some of those advantages. And lucky me, I got the challenges. Um, so our setup was a lot of work. I think, again, I can see some of your faces right now that if this is something that you're launching into for the first time, please, again, give yourself a little like grace to know that you're trying to compact something that is a student experience into an online one. Um, so some of the things that we really, really um, want you to know is this is never ending. There's not just create it, it's done, we're good, and on we go. It's never really done. You know, mandates change, information changes. This is truly a campus-wide initiative. Um, we actually have some folks online right now from our um, counseling office because this is part of their world too. So make sure you're finding those partners to help you with your online content. Um, one thing I do want to make sure we do highlight that, you know, online will never replace our face-to-face, -face, nor should it. Um, but it's something, again, we want you to really, you know, again, first time out, really pick maybe about five themes or five topics that you know you want to make an impact with. Um, you're never going to be able to address everything, but if you start there, it gives you something to be able to grow from. So um, we actually um, took time to make sure that we update this, but if you're launching it, make sure you have different eyes from different offices popping in, because we learned that we were definitely student experience heavy, and we wanted to make sure after year two that academics got a voice and everybody else is included in that as well. So some of the advantages, um, we are lucky in having Advantage Design Group as the host for our online program. Um, just their platform has a bunch of really cool tools um, that we have access to. 
Uh, though, of course, I recognize that depending on the platform you all are going to be using, um, there may be different ones. Um, so a couple that we have are the Learn More buttons, which in the picture to the right of this slide, you'll see our mascot flicks little head at the bottom. Um, and students get to click on those in different slides that populates a list at the very end, um, which is an items of interest list. And they get links to more resources after the fact um, to go more in depth into things. Um, there's also a quick tip um, section of certain slides that is just a really a, a call out button, very colorful um, and brings attention to um, very short specific pieces of information so that um, uh, it doesn't get lost in more text heavy um, slides. And then last year we added an FAQ function, which I think was on the slide just before this, um, but that allows students to ask questions right inside the orientation. Um, while of course answers are not necessarily as media as they would be face to face, it's still quicker than um, trying to find contact information and, and shooting an email out to a person. Um, and then uh, consistent messages um, and presentation information. As we all know, uh, when it comes to in-person programs, sometimes we're on our game, sometimes we're not. Uh, some presenters are a little stronger than others, um, but at least with online, we know that our, our students are getting the same messaging regardless of when they're going through it. Uh, tracking and data collection is another advantage. Uh, we do take um, attendance at our on-campus programs. Um, but online, I get to see that every student has seen every slide, whereas on campus, um, folks go to the bathroom or they leave early for work or, you know, whatever the, the situation is. Um, so they may not get everything, um, but I know online that they are. And then there's also quizzes and a final test built in to measure their comprehension of the content, which is something we don't have the ability to do in person. Um, and then lastly, uh, other than during the summer months, so right now when I'm making updates to it each year, uh, the link to our online orientation is always accessible in students' web advisor accounts, so they can go back at any time and revisit the information if they need to. Next slide, please. All right, our last one. Man, that was like really fast, and we are fast talkers. So um, again, if we missed anything, this actually is a beautiful way to end our section. Uh, we really want to make sure that you all know we're in this together. Um, Andrea and myself, you know, being in this for so long now, we are really kind of putting it out there that if you'd like to meet with us on the side, we're happy to do so. We've actually been meeting with a couple of SUNY campuses already. Um, we actually held a WebEx meeting and then after we actually shared our content and our slides, because as far as we're concerned, you know, SUNY, we're, we're a huge family. Um, yeah, I'll leave that joke there. Um, we're a huge family, um, but it's something that we want to make sure that all of our students, regardless of what campus they're on, um, know that we are connected in some way. And I think being a community college, uh, we have that advantage, um, but we are building a family. So again, at the end, we really will ha happily send out our information. Just shoot us an email um, and we'll pop on if you have questions, if you're navigating this. Um, this is something that we feel very passionate about. And then of course, as folks have been mentioning their virtual programming, that's our link right there. So as you get these slides later, we encourage you to check them out. Um, we chose to also stay engaged throughout the summer activities wise, usually our summer months aren't as active, um, but we are continuing to do that since we know our onboarding in fall is gonna be looking very different, um, no matter what that may be. So from Andrew and myself, thank you very much. Um, and again, so much more to share but we will end there to honor other folks in their time. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your likes. So we knew we'd run out of time and look here, we are running out of time. So we're gonna skip City Online. We'll go to them another time. We wanna leave a little time for MCC. MCC, go team, go. Thank you, thank you. Hi, I'm Tom, um, one of the instructional designers at MCC and I am here with my colleague, Matthew Lawson. Matthew, I think you've got the first slide. All right, uh, so my name is Matthew Lawson and I worked with MCC for the last seven years. Um, I'm the program manager for orientation and I report to the director of admissions and we are under the enrollment management branch of student affairs at the college. Um, our orientation program, just a little brief overview, um, it's not mandatory for our students. We are one of those highly encouraged programs that we encourage our students to go to. Um, and we offer programming for the fall and spring semesters. Um, and we usually have about 15 to 20 of our peer navigator or orientation team work with our program too. 
MCC has is broken into seven schools. And so each of our um, orientation programs follows a guided pathways model and that we make sure that our students are connected to their academic pathway, that they get the specific information necessary that they're looking for out of orientation. Next slide, please. Um, so we too went with the Vanish Design Group about the same time that Finger Lakes Community College went. Um, we actually met them at NOTA and uh, we were looking uh, to meet our students um, online. And one of the positive things about COVID, and there's not much positive you can say about COVID, but it's really forced us and it has allowed the college to meet our students online and offer our student life and our student experience program virtually. Um, before COVID, um, our online orientation was always designed to be a backup to the in-person experience. And so we would offer this for the students that did not attend the in-person or did not live local to the uh, Rochester area. Um, but now because of COVID, um, all orientation this fall will be online for our students. Um, we also were looking for a program that was um, flexible for our students. We wanted students to be able to do this at any hour, be able to stop and go, um, and have um, a kind of the look and feel that it mimicked the in-person experience. Um, the one thing we did not have last year that we are adding this year is a parent and family uh, guest access program to our online orientation. Our in-person experience, we, use, we do have a good attendance for our parents and family members to come to campus with their student. And we wanted to provide that same experience again this year. So uh, we have added that guest access program so that students can have that. Next slide, please. To complement orientation, um, and a lot of the uh, functions of our online orientation are similar to Finger Lakes. Um, we do break it down. Um, we talk about technology resources. We talk about student life. We talk about campus safety. We really talk about next steps. Um, we are updating a lot of that to meet COVID. And as the college and SUNY makes decisions, we wanted to make sure that that's infused. One of the things that we are partnering with, and again, Jenny was very correct, you have to have those community partnerships. You have to have those partnerships around campus. Um, and one of the things that we are doing really closely is we are working with our residence life office. Um, in years past, we would partner with them and we would host an opening weekend. We would have a thousand students and parents and families on campus at the same time. There's no way you can do that with social distancing. So we are infusing this into our online orientation program. We have purchased um, and we're adding implemented separate tracks so that students can pick information out that they're looking for. So we're partnering with our international student services offices. So there's gonna be an international student orientation built into this. Um, we are uh, allowing students to pick and choose their, their interests. So if they're an adult learner, there's an adult learner component that they can select and get more specific information. We're adding in for our single parent students, we're adding things about childcare and community resources on that and schooling and all that. So we're really trying to make this as accessible and user friendly for our students. We also, and I talked about this a little bit before, but we really want to build community with our students. We want to build excitement. We know that a lot of our students that are coming from high school and they have been socially isolated since March. And so they are missing out on a lot of their traditional programs, the proms, the balls and all that. So we're starting that now. And we really, we kind of flipped the switch back in March. And, you know, we had all these cool, fun on-campus experiences and then overnight, virtual change of plans and so that's what we kind of did and so we're doing stuff like on instagram and tiktok and facebook and i have never did tiktok before this experience but i'll tell you i'm on tiktok now and we're seeing that and our students are there and we're actually really building that up um, and so we're doing stuff throughout the whole experience we're partnering with our diversity office and we're doing diversity discussions especially after the recent events we're talking about black lives matter we're talking about voting we're talking about pride we're talking about all these things we're talking making sure that students and family members feel belong and we're also adding um, some zoom q a students, uh, sessions for our parents and family members and our new students um, and so those will be facilitated by our orientation staff, but members of our college community be part of those community, uh, those Zoom sessions too. And it's really about just having students meet and greet with each other and meet with us and build that excitement and all that. So um, that's kind of a nutshell. Next slide, please. I think that's it. And that's it, yep. Yep, no, that's all good. Yeah, so we've got just two more slides here. Um, I just wanted to add a couple things that the virtual campus team does uh, in conjunction with uh, with Matthew's team. Um, so the virtual campus is basically, you know, the online campus at MCC. So we do reach out to all of the students who are 
uh, new to fully online or uh, to, to, to the institution, just to kind of touch base with them and offer them some um, 30 minute live Zoom sessions that we just have as a separate type of orientation that's a lot more specific about what it means to be an online student. Um, we're also gonna open those up uh, even in more generally uh, because we know our students will be kind of on our online platform in the fall as well, even students that you know weren't planning on it. Um, so what we do in that is we show, um, again, it's 30 minutes, uh, about 10 minutes of it is, is a video. You see a screenshot of it there that um, you'll hear from different students and faculty members, staff members, um, kind of talking about um, different issues surrounding being, uh, being a successful online student. Uh, there is a link to that video. So when this uh, slideshow gets um, dispersed, you'll be able to click on that and watch that video that we show our students. Um, and then that's followed with a general Q&A where we can have discussions with those, uh, with those students. Uh, next slide. Uh, the other thing I wanted to share was um, similar to Binghamton, we do have a course in Blackboard. It's an open course. So students don't uh, actually, they don't self enroll. Uh, it's just open. So uh, there's also a link to that. So if you, no matter which institution you're from, you can click on that link and see our online uh, Blackboard course. Uh, and again, it goes through very similar modules uh, than uh, as Binghamton with uh, topics such as how can I be successful in my online course? you know, uh, some walkthroughs on how to use Blackboard, where to get help. Um, there's also some messages in there, uh, for example, one from the president uh, of the school. So just to kind of help our students feel connected, it's built, you can see on the screenshot right there, it's built right into our MyMCC portal that's housed within Blackboard. So students can access that pretty easily. Um, so if you have any questions about either of those resources. Um, we're always happy to talk as well, share all the things. So thank you all for sticking around the uh, after party here. <laughs> that's it. I think that's our last slide. Yeah. I love that you called it an after, you know, I love that you called it an after party. All right, students. That was there it is. They were supposed to be now and now they're not now. So uh, I love an after party. So I just, I did have a quick question, um, Tom and um, uh, Matthew. The video about how to be a, an effective, good online student, is that a student talking or is that like faculty, is it both? Yeah, it's, um, it's a combination. So we have, I think, three or four students that are part of it that were just kind of interviewed with similar questions that we've asked the students that came on today. So the students can hear from other students, on, you know, what was most helpful, what do you wish you knew, those kinds of things. Um, so yeah, and then they'll also hear from instructors and um, some of the members from the virtual campus team are also on the video. So they kind of hear from a bunch of different folks. Um, mm -hmm. our, that was produced in-house. Um, I know a lot of you might know Jeremy Case. He does a lot of video work um, at SUNY as well. So he's part of our virtual campus team. So we're lucky to have him. So he produced that for us. Yep, and we also, I just want to draw everyone's attention to, I'm very mindful of time, um, uh, the, uh, Emily, has raised our awareness about international students, which is a sort of a whole other different level of welcoming students, right? Not only in terms of time differences, but also cultural differences, access, language, and, and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, Emily, if you would indulge us and add that question, or I, we can add that question to the, um, the workplace space, I think it's really important to remind us of that. We're sort of, you know, in our little pivot of on campus, fit remote, undergraduate, graduate, et cetera. So, and, and we can't forget, we can't forget that piece because it's extremely important, especially given SUNY's global reach. So I can't thank our presenters enough. Uh, the students were amazing. Thank you all so much. Jamie has um, posted the Google Doc in our, thank you, Emily, very much. Um, Jamie's posted the Google Doc link so that you all will receive the uh, recording. I will also post it in our workplace space. John Graham, thank you so much. Oh, you're most welcome. Delighted to be here and to be a part of thank the team. You. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, thank you very much. So if there's any questions, uh, you all, almost all know how to get a hold of me. And if you don't, you know how to get a hold of someone who does. Uh, let's keep this conversation going. Thank you. Stay safe. Have a good afternoon. Bye, everyone.